so I've been filming with a lot of three axis gimbals over the years, both personally and professionally, and I love the production value that they bring to your videos. And at the same time, I've been getting a lot of questions from you guys about my setups. And now that I've started vlogging with one more regularly for the past two months of my vlog, um, I've been getting even more questions about my particular setup. Uh, we're also starting to see prominent vloggers like Casey Neistat start to uh, test them out. Last week he just started testing out a handheld 3-axis gimbal in his vlog. So I thought what better time than now to do a complete review of my entire setup because I feel like you guys are starting to pick up on just how smooth my rig is, are wondering how to get similar results, and are also wondering whether or not a gimbal is right for you. And so I thought we would do a complete review of what it's like so you guys can make an informed decision about whether or not you'd like to. So a big part of the reason why I decided to start vlogging with a handheld 3-axis gimbal a few months ago was because about a year ago, Julie and I were in New York City filming an epic NYC run video. And that video was filmed with rollerblades, a gimbal, and then afterwards cut together with edgy music. And it came out really well. I was really happy with it. But afterwards, you would not believe how many people told me I was copying Casey Neistat. And every time it would happen, I would just say, nope. All right, now that I got that off of the chest piece, I can breathe again. I can believe again. I'm a human being and I am flawed and I am amused when you try to play God. I show my claws, show my teeth. They think they got beef, but I eat them like beets. Lace up the cleats, knock it out the park. You're a wingless bird, a resort without a bark. If you go back to the very first video that was ever posted on this channel, you will find a similar running video filmed with rollerblades, a gimbal, cut together with edgy music, and that video was up months before Casey ever started vlogging and before I ever even knew about him. So Casey is my favorite vlogger on YouTube and his Gorillapod idea was complete genius and it has transformed the world of vlogging. We see a lot of vloggers out there filming with Gorillapods nowadays. However, I did not want to film with a Gorillapod and be labeled as somebody who was copying Casey Neistat. So I of course started to think about what I was good at filming with and naturally decided to start integrating a handheld 3-axis gimbal into my vlogs. So I've been vlogging with a Pilotfly H2 which just came out on the market a few months ago and the reason why I chose Pilotfly and the reason why I've chosen Pilotfly in the past and I should mention this is not a paid endorsement in any way whatsoever the reason why I chose Pilotfly is because they always seem to be just one step ahead of the competition their IMUs, their MCUs, their encoders, they all seem to be just a little bit more dialed in than the competition to give you that slightly smoother, more responsive result. And so if I'm going to spend a big chunk of money on something, I'm not going to spend two thirds, three quarters of the price on something that's slightly cheaper but still has shakes and jitters and yeah, I, I don't want that. I want something that's super smooth and responsive, and so I'm willing to spend a little extra for a pilot fly, which also, in my opinion, has a slightly higher build quality for a more refined look. What you're going to notice with three axis gimbals, even when they're paired with something like rollerblades, is that you're still going to get some shakes and jitters in your final image, particularly when you're filming with something like a GoPro which doesn't have any in-camera image stabilization. And so as a result, I end up spending a lot of time in post applying things like warp stabilizer and After Effects. And with a lot of things moving around, you end up spending a lot of time rotoscoping frame by frame tracking points that might be throwing that warp stabilizer off to get those shots to look like they're on rails. Having said that, it takes a redonkulous amount of time and so I've been looking for gimbals that can get me as close to that finished result as possible without having to do all that work in post. And what I love about this particular combination is that when I combine the H2 with my rollerblades, the results are f***ing amazing.
Having said that, when you try to walk or run with a Pilot Fly H2, every now and then you are going to notice some shakes and some jitters in your image that the combination is just having a really difficult time trying to resolve. And so in those situations, uh, and particularly the up and down axes of motion that you see in running and walking, in order to get rid of some of that stuff, you're going to want to start looking at other forms of image stabilization in camera. And so one way that I've got around that is by combining it with the brand new Panasonic GX85, which has IBIS, which stands for in-body image stabilization, and their brand new dual IS system. When you combine that with their in-lens stabilization, Particularly their Power OIS, I've noticed that the Mega OIS stabilization that's in their kit lens is okay, but if you want the absolute best, I totally recommend going with a Power OIS lens. I've been using their brand new 12 to 60 millimeter lens, which I've been really happy with. Now, instead of using a Panasonic GX85, you could also use something like a Sony a7R2 or a Sony a7S2 that has IBIS as well. However, those cameras are also three times the price. So you're probably wondering what it's like to vlog with a handheld 3-axis gimbal all day long. And before I get into it, I should mention that I am an Ironman triathlete. I do a crazy amount of swimming, biking, and running, and so I like to think that my arms are pretty tough. And yes, it does wear on you quite a bit throughout the day. It is quite a heavy combination. And so if you're somebody who's already been vlogging with something like a Gorillapod and a mid-sized camera, and you find that combination quite heavy and a little too much, the three axis gimbal route might not be for you. It's a lot of weight. Every time you go to hold the camera out and get a selfie shot looking back at you, that's a lot of weight to be holding out there. The other really important thing to consider is that every single time you put the camera onto the gimbal, it has to be balanced correctly so that you don't burn out the motors on the gimbal, which means you have to fine tune the position of the camera on the gimbal to make sure that it's pitch, roll, and yaw aren't out of balance. And once you become proficient at it, it usually takes about 30 seconds every time you put the camera onto the camera. It takes maybe about 15 seconds to get it off but that is something that you need to consider. And so if you're capturing real life moments as they're unfolding, 30 seconds could mean missing that shot. Every time you change the focal length of a zoom lens, say you zoom in a little bit or you zoom back or you tilt out your screen or you flip up your screen, you're gonna have to readjust that balance again because you're essentially changing the center of balance. Transporting the gimbal also requires a fair amount of care in the sense that it's a pretty delicate instrument that can burn out quite easily if it's not taken care of. The motors, if they're leaning against something or the camera is slightly out of balance when you go to turn it on, it can burn itself out and then you can find yourself in a situation where you had to ship it back for repair. When the gimbal is turned off, I carry it around by the arm that curves up behind the LCD screen. And for climbing, I screw a tripod plate into the quarter 20 mount on the bottom, tie a rope around the base, and clip the other end onto my harness. When choosing a gimbal for vlogging, I'd also recommend looking for one that has tool-less quick adjustments on the arms and doesn't require an Allen key, along with a pan and tilt joystick button and a mode selector button for selecting different modes. Here I'm demonstrating the Pilot Fly's follow mode. A horizon lock mode. and a mode that locks all three axes. The other really important thing to be aware of is this combination is going to attract a lot of attention and they're gonna see you coming a mile away. So if you're somebody who relies on being able to capture a lot of inconspicuous shots like a daily vlogger, 
they might not want you filming in those situations because they might look at you and think that you're a much more professional filmer who might need permits or permission to film in that environment with that equipment and so they might ask you to leave. All in all, I have to say I am absolutely loving the footage that's coming out of this combination and because I've been a professional filmmaker for years, I don't mind carrying around all that extra gear. Any hoozle, I should probably wrap this up and I want to say thanks for watching guys. I really appreciate it and if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up or subscribe for more. We have more epic content coming on the way. We spent a full five days of filming last winter for our next epic run video, which is coming later this fall. We have more outdoor adventures on the way and other cool stuff that I can't talk about yet, but it's all coming soon. And I hope you subscribe for more and stick around and watch it. I'm really stoked to put it out there. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching guys. Really appreciate it. I hope you have a great day. Bye.